Hello, everyone, and welcome to Northwestern News Network's COVID-19 special. I'm Justin Sweetwood. We hope all of you are staying safe and healthy. When students left for spring break two weeks ago, there were just over 18,000 confirmed coronavirus cases in the United States. Today, that figure stands at nearly a quarter million. All aspects of daily life have been disrupted as we find new ways to adapt to these challenging times. The same can be said for us here at NNN, as more than a dozen of our reporters have been working to provide you with the latest updates before spring quarter begins online next week. We have been working remotely and conducting interviews over the phone and on online video platforms. To start off the show, I spoke with the Associated Student Government President and with Northwestern's Chief Risk and Compliance Officer to learn more about what the university is doing in response to this global pandemic. The Northwestern community was notified on March 13th of the first confirmed case of coronavirus on campus, but the disease had been on the administration's radar since the initial outbreak. There was a group of us watching what was happening in China, but that was uh, hard to say, right? Like, you know, what, was that going to leave? Was it going to be contained? Once the virus arrived in the States, the university took action. So the university, probably a little over a month or so ago now, um, kind of formally activated uh, more of a crisis management framework protocol. Soon after, dance marathon was canceled, spring break was extended, classes went remote, and finals were made optional. But with those changes came more questions than answers. ASG President Izzy Doble and Vice President Adam Davies have helped relay student concerns to university officials. Adam and I have been really just streamlining all the communication, like even via text to admin, like, um, hey, this is something that's going on. You need to talk about it. Something needs to happen soon. The university recently decided to implement a pass-no-pass no pass grading system for spring quarter that won't affect GPAs, as it provided, quote, equity and compassion to those most impacted by this pandemic. But Davies thinks that might not be the case. The only solution that actually would help all first-generation low-income students and all students in general would be a pass-fail where you also get, like, GPA credit. Many students have also been concerned about spring quarter tuition, which despite the switch to remote learning has not been reduced. I think some you know, there's some expectations that, well, if you're not on campus, does the cost model of the university change? And that's not really the case. There are no plans to change uh, tuition uh, at this time. Doble hopes to eventually bring tuition to the table, but for now, it's important that each student gets a say in their academic future. I think that any kind of system that allows for the student to have the agency to decide what works best for them is going to be the best way forward. Zach Miller will have more on tuition later in the show, but first, here's Megan Leibowitz. Thanks, Justin. As the number of COVID-19 patients continues to climb, medical systems are feeling the strain of resource shortages. So what's the state of health care in Chicago and Evanston? There are a lot more people in the community that are carriers or that have it that don't need you know, medical care or have not gotten a test because there aren't enough tests. Evanston Mayor Steve Haggerty says right now medical facilities in Evanston have enough ventilators, but he's concerned about what COVID-19's exponential growth means for hospital resources. It's so important that we comply with the stay-at-home order that Governor Pritzker issued. The city of Evanston is taking steps to identify facilities that can serve as temporary medical centers if healthcare systems reach capacity. These include a community center and facilities at Northwestern. These, quote, makeshift centers will never have the type of uh, equipment and support that you would get in a, tradition, in a traditional hospital. In Chicago, Northwestern medicine doctors work to isolate COVID-19 patients to try to contain the spread. What we've done in our ICU is localize those patients uh, together in a specialized area of the ICU uh, that can provide extra protection uh, for patients also that are cohorted in that environment as well as providers. How quickly can a patient go from being completely asymptomatic to in the ICU? I want to emphasize that most cases are still mild. And the ones that get our attention, of course, are the ones that uh, you mentioned where patients uh, develop symptoms uh, and unfortunately can progress uh, fairly quickly, usually and in some cases within uh, a few days or even faster to being in a state where they're critically ill and need life support. Many people's health insurance is tied to employment, so paying for a COVID-19 hospital bill could be a challenge for some patients. People shouldn't be charged for 
all of the care associated with this particular disease. But Dr. Adia Benton says even if people aren't ultimately billed for COVID-19 care, complexities can arise if a patient is hospitalized with more than one condition. You might have a patient who comes in for, say, kidney failure or something else, and it turns out that they also have COVID infection. How do you treat that person? And as the healthcare system is hit, so is the economy. Here's NNN's Zach Miller to break it down. It still is not clear whether Northwestern students will be able to return to campus this spring. And many students still have questions about how the ongoing pandemic will affect their educational experience. Among these questions, will the switch to remote learning affect tuition prices? An online petition hosted on change.org is asking the administration for a partial refund of tuition costs. Northwestern is a very prestigious university and the steep cost of attendance of this school has a lot of things baked into it. You know, like for STEM students, the access to top research labs for undergraduate research, um, you know, facilities such as SPAC, MUD, Maine, um, you know, and most importantly, in-person guidance from from faculty so like that's really important to a lot of students like that's why we paid uh, a lot of money to attend the school and without these amenities karamda is asking northwestern to adjust its price to better reflect the value of remote learning the petition has garnered over 4,000 signatures since it was launched in late march now the university has announced they will refund room and board costs for all students who have left campus for the duration of the online learning period the changes will not affect financial aid allotments, meaning that all students who are able to leave campus will benefit regardless of their expected contribution. The petition is still active in collecting signatures. For NNR, I'm Zach Miller. Next up, how is COVID-19 affecting social workers? Our own Joey Safchik has more. Thanks, Zach. While other universities have closed their dorms entirely, Northwestern is still allowing students to live on campus if they don't have anywhere else to go. But those students need food to eat and the campus residences need to be cleaned with more diligence than ever. The hourly employees who do these jobs are still essential at NU, but it's not business as usual. From the dining halls to dorm halls, Food service workers, custodians, and other hourly employees are concerned about COVID on campus. They're worried about losing their jobs. They're worried about their health. Northwestern spokesperson John Yates says the university understands that, quote, the impacts of COVID-19 could be felt disproportionately by these critical team members. They are often in contact with lots of students on campus, which makes them even more susceptible. On social media, students organizing for labor rights at Northwestern or solar is raising emergency funds to support campus workers. We are trying to respond in a way that is cognizant of what they um, need. Questions about child care, sick leave and unemployment benefits. Should any service workers get laid off? And so balancing these needs of having a steady income and taking care of their families at the same time is very stressful. Compass, the food service group that partners with Northwestern, recently signed a contract with Unite Here Local One, the union representing NU's food service workers. The contract guarantees an extra seven days of paid sick leave, plus an additional 14 days if a worker tests positive for the coronavirus. Workers also have access to their full allocation of paid sick leave and vacation days for the year. Solar says it's a step in the right direction because many workers have underlying physical conditions which make them vulnerable. Solar is organizing all of its efforts remotely using digital tools like Venmo and PayPal to raise more than $13,000, which they've donated to upwards of 80 hourly employees who've expressed need on a bilingual Google form. We have a lot of deep relationships with workers that we've been um, building over years, so they trust us. As Solar hoped, Northwestern has announced they're working with Compass in order to leverage that federal stimulus package and pay dining workers equal to what they would be making if they were working full time until the end of the academic year in June. Joey Safchik, Northwestern News Network. Great reporting, Joey. Although winter quarter ended a few weeks ago, not all students were able to return home. Here's NNN's Raina Song with more. While well, some schools have closed down their dorms, Northwestern has allowed students to stay on campus when necessary. So how has life changed for students still on campus? The reason why I don't go back home is like there's 
a lot of risk like in in airports or like on the plane like when you have a lot of, a lot of like contact physical contact with other people so like i might get the virus and then just spread it to my family back home but campus hardly looks normal during the extended spring break foster walker will be the only open dining hall and all the food is served takeout style in a paper box. I mean, certainly, like, the options are more limited. And, for instance, lunch and dinner is the same. For some students living on North Campus, it is more convenient to order food online or cook themselves. But now, there's only, like, Plex open, and then it is so far from my dorm, so I usually just get Uber Eat, like, some online delivery service, yeah. I buy some groceries online from Amazon and then just cook by myself, like, in my dorm, yeah. With most of the gym facilities closed on campus, some students have been working out using online tutorials. I've been like watching some YouTube videos, you know, like home workout where you don't need any equipment. So. And inside the dorms, no visitors, just authorized residents. As a little resident, I can open this door leading to the great room, which is connected to Press Cafe and the gym. But only willing residents can open the store now. Usually, the store is left unlocked. Looks to me, we are such a small population, and if someone gets sick in Wheeler, I think we're all gonna get. Rena Song, Northwestern News Network. In response to the spread of the coronavirus, Northwestern President Morton Shapiro sent an email stating most students should plan to depart following their final exams and should not plan to come back until further notice. Shane, a senior studying theater, unknowingly had their final performance. And I was like, I have three more hours to be in college, hoping to fully tilt up so I could jog across the finish line and see it all, you know? Um, but then they just called off the race. How are students grappling with this uncertainty? Uncertainty is the biggest inducer of anxiety. So anxiety is a, a real problem right now. The thought of bringing the disease home can also be anxiety inducing. My mom, like, she, she was diagnosed with cancer. And so whenever I come home, I get like super anxious about that. Both of my parents are 60 plus. Um, both of them have pre-existing health conditions. The idea of bringing home an illness is a hundred times worse than like, anything I could ever imagine. Students like Milan and Brown also worry about their mental health away from campus. Although I'm like a baseline pretty like anxious person, like it is like exacerbated by being at home. My heart is really with the people that are going back into unsafe or sad or oppressive home situations. To the best they can, many students have still found ways to cope day by day. Dr. Shankman says it's really important to have a routine. Even when you're stuck at home, trying to have a routine for when you do your work. It's an opportunity for us to be really, really imaginative, really, really creative. And how are students doing that? Me and my friends got really into playing like an online board game. We learn how to cook. I'm calling my grandparents. I'm calling my friends. I feel okay with like loving people being like the only thing that I have to really do because mental health matters. Um, chronic stress is a, is a big precipitator of worse immunity. So if we can take care of ourselves, reduce our stress, reduce our anxiety, we're gonna help our body's uh, natural ability to fight off any virus. Students continue to battle the uncertainty of their own mental health and the outcome of a global pandemic. The main question right now that people in every field are dealing with in their own way is how do we catch the falling pieces and then the next question the question that you're sort of talking about will be how do we rebuild reporting from home in ann arbor michigan alexa McHale, northwestern news network and now to jenny Hu for a story on racism and covid19 as the number of confirmed coronavirus cases continues rising in the U.S., so do physical and verbal attacks on Asians and Asian Americans. As reports of more frequent and violent acts of racism and xenophobia targeting these communities surface, Northwestern students express their fears and hopes. I do feel very self-conscious when I do go out, though. Like, especially today, I went grocery shopping. Um, and I had to like clear my throat, but I was like, 
cautious. Asian and Asian American Northwestern students continue to fear increasing discrimination, racism, and xenophobia that is accompanying COVID-19. It's now about like how I act and what the status quo is in the U.S. Government officials, including President Trump and House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, use terms like quote, Chinese virus, contributing to Asian and Asian Americans' concerns. Online reporting form Stop AAPIH has received more than 650 direct reports of discrimination since March 18th. Because, like, somebody who's, like, a prominent political figure has used it, it's almost, like, legitimized in a sort of way now. Some Asian and Asian American students say Northwestern has served as a safe space, but now that many students are not on campus, they're experiencing racism firsthand. When the outbreak first started, I have experienced racial discrimination for the first time. Students, however, remain proud of who they are. At this point in time, it's actually most important to embrace your Asian American identity and not hide it. Whether international or U.S. citizens, Asian and Asian American students hope to stop the spread of the virus and the racism that spread alongside it. Earlier this year, the South Korean movie Parasite won the Academy Award for Best Picture. This sparked conversations about inclusion and better representation of Asians and Asian Americans in the U.S. But celebration has subsided now that Asian Americans are defending themselves from re-emerging racism. Jenny Ha, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Jenny. And NN's reporters have been working from coast to coast during spring break, and we're going to check in with them to see what's the latest in their home states. First, here's Angelina Campanile from New York. I'm in Yonkers, New York, which borders New York City. The number of coronavirus cases in New York City accounts for 23% of the nationwide total. The state's COVID-19 death toll is now over 1,000. This figure comes less than a month after the state's first case was identified in New Rochelle. But now the largest cluster of cases is in New York City. Construction of temporary hospitals, including one in Central Park, is underway throughout the five boroughs and in Westchester County. Doctors and nurses still face severe shortages of vital protective equipment. Governor Andrew Cuomo says the peak in cases is expected in late April. From New York, I'm Angelina Campanile. Zoom is the new international social space, conference room, and classroom. And Northwestern is no exception as its faculty and students prepare to begin the spring quarter online. This is my new campus. Professors are considering how to best administer assignments while also accommodating students who may not have the necessary resources like internet or a quiet space to focus at home. All of us are going to be teaching and all of you are going to be learning um, with our own arrangements or limitations. Evan says the situation poses a lot of questions and students and faculty alike will just have to learn to adjust together. I think one thing that's gonna be really important is to you know try the first week and then get feedback from people. Okay, what's working well for you? What is not working well? Evan says professors are feeling the pressure to continue providing the education that NU is known for despite the pandemic. I guess that's the that's the that's the overriding um, feeling is um, anxiety and uh, a certain kind of performance anxiety we can call it. And though the new pass fail policy alleviates some students' stress about grades, others worry that potentially compromised class quality will hurt them later on. I mean, it's still a little concerning that. I won't get the information potentially, or I won't get as much out of the class because it's a major requirement, which means I'm going to need like the skills and knowledge for future classes. If there is a deficiency, that doesn't hurt me now, but it hurts me later. Though it is not ideal, Evan says that Northwestern's administration is doing its best to deal with the issue at hand. I don't think it's Northwestern's fault. I don't think it's the administration's fault. I think they're just responding to a crisis. I don't think it's, I don't think it's ideal. <laughs> Chloe Cope, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Chloe. While most of us are thinking about going back to college amid coronavirus, high school seniors are trying to make the decisions to get here in the first place. I spoke with admitted students who are facing unprecedented obstacles as the commitment deadline approaches. It's kind of a tricky balance right now, obviously taking in everything that's going on around us, 
with the news, with all the latest coronavirus updates, but also receiving my college emails and um, my acceptances at the same time. Students admitted to Northwestern and other universities have to decide where they will go to college amid the anxiety and travel restrictions of COVID-19. Even though like it might like sound good on paper, like going to Northwestern, I still want to like experience what it truly is on campus. When acceptances were released in mid-March, Illinois was already under a stay-at-home order, meaning admitted students can't visit campus. Chicago was an, an endeavor I was going to undergo unless I got in. No one really knew that we would be making these decisions from behind our computer screens. Like some other universities, Northwestern plans to have opportunities for admitted students to talk to current students over the phone or online. I'm still going to definitely take a look at those resources, make sure that I'm not just ruling out options based on the current travel situation. Students say the anxiety stretches beyond acceptance season. The pandemic could impact their freshman fall. That first day of freshman year at college, how is that going to look? It's not going to be your stereotypical, you know, Disney, you know, college movie, you know, that most people anticipate. But that doesn't mean they're not looking forward to it. Actually getting like my Northwestern acceptance was kind of like a, like a joyful moment during all this craziness. Unlike a handful of other schools, including Columbia College Chicago and the University of Illinois at Chicago, Northwestern has not extended the May 1st commitment deadline. Now, I'm reporting to you remotely from California. NNN's Joey Safchik has the latest updates on our home state. Thanks, Olivia. Olivia and I are both sheltering in place at our home in Southern California. California's Governor Gavin Newsom issued a stay at home mandate back in mid-March. But medical experts, the governor and L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti say that we're expecting L.A. to reach where New York is now in the coming weeks. They're expecting a surge of cases over the course of April. In the last four days, we have seen a doubling of the number of hospitalizations related to COVID-19. In the last four days, double the population that's been hospitalized. For now, Angelinos are doing their best to soak up the sun while staying at home in solitude. From Santa Monica, California, Joey Safchik, Northwestern News Network. Thank you, I'm Jack Leto with sports. The NCAA has canceled all sports for the rest of the academic year because of concerns around COVID-19. But after a vote, NCAA leadership has granted an extra year of eligibility for all student athletes who play spring sports. Northwestern fields seven sports in the spring season. However, winter student athletes were not given this eligibility relief, which officially ends the collegiate careers of several postseason bound Northwestern seniors, including senior wrestler Shane Oster, who qualified for the NCAA tournament but will not be competing, senior swimmer Crystal Lara, who would have been competing in her first NCAA championship. In addition, Sarah Nicholson has no more years left of track eligibility. She had not officially qualified yet, but was preparing to compete in the NCAA regionals. And finally, the women's basketball team did not officially qualify, but they were projected by all major media outlets to host an NCAA regional. Brianna Hopkins, Abby Wolf, Bertie Galernick, Amber Jamison, and Abby Scheid had their chance at their first NCAA tournament cut short. As of now, no fall sports have been affected, but the NCAA and Northwestern Athletics say new information will be posted on each of their respective websites. Reporting for NNN, I'm Jack Lita. Thanks, Jack. Let's now go over to Kayla Nichols to learn a little bit more about what's been going on in her home state of Michigan. Kayla. Over the last few weeks, Michigan's coronavirus cases have been increasing at an alarming rate. As of April 2nd, Michigan has had 417 deaths and more than 10,700 confirmed cases. That's the third highest in the nation. To slow the spread of the virus, Governor Gretchen Whitmer signed a stay-at-home order and closed all K-12 schools for the remainder of the school year. That is how we will start to slow the spread of COVID-19. Stopping the spread is really the only tool we have. Governor Whitmer has also exchanged words with President Donald Trump. After Whitmer asked Trump to declare a major disaster declaration, he stated that he had a big problem with the governor. Whitmer tweeted her response saying she has repeatedly asked for help and is also willing to work with Vice President Pence. Reporting from my hometown, Benton Harbor, Michigan, I'm Kayla Nichols. 
The coronavirus outbreak is affecting Northwestern Wildcats from the U.S. to the Middle East. Northwestern's campus in Doha, Qatar, has become like a ghost town. Most people left, so the buildings are just like empty and the halls, it's just, it's like an apocalypse. It's so sad. Nadej Bizimungu is still living in the dorms after Northwestern closed the Doha campus on March 10th and moved to online learning for the rest of the semester. Most of my friends left, most of my international um, students' friends, they left, but I can't go back home because my own country is also under lockdown and I can't get in. Nadej, who is from Rwanda, has found it difficult to focus on schoolwork in the midst of the pandemic. I'm not even doing anything. I have time, but I'm just like doing the minimum. I've never been this like demotivated in my life. While Northwestern's Evanston students are still on spring break, Qatar students are on the semester schedule, not quarters, and have already begun online instruction. I really don't like online classes. I, I like going to class. I like waking up, getting ready and going to class. So just getting the routine together was very hard. And UQ staff members are trying to support students through this transition. Now after that kind of initial week of oh my goodness, what is happening around us? What do we do? Kind of crisis mode to being like, okay, this is our new normal. Um, how are we going to move forward with this? For Tatawatage, this means cultivating a sense of community now that students are physically disconnected from campus. It's challenging, definitely challenging, but it's also, I think, given us some space to be creative. Extracurricular activities have come to a temporary halt, but Tatawatage hopes to revive some of them virtually. Think online book clubs, debates, and chess tournaments. How can we ensure that we are still part of the NUQ community and that we are looking out for our community members and, and being there for each other uh, when we are so far apart? About 300 students are enrolled at Northwestern Qatar, which makes for a small, tight-knit group. This has shown to me what an incredible uh, community NUQ is. It showed me, you know, who and what a wildcat is. And UQ has extended the deadline to take a course pass fail to the last day of classes, April 23rd. Students are still waiting to hear whether summer classes will be canceled or held online. Savannah Kelly, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Savannah. With social distancing in full swing, college students are turning to the internet as a way to stay connected. Okay, I'm bored in the house and I'm with more than 253 million Americans under stay-at-home orders, many people are battling boredom. So they're turning to social media to fill time, finding creative ways to stick with their daily routines. Messing around with virtual backgrounds. And doing some family dancing. This is more than a group at this point, like it's becoming a brand. Lucas Moisevev is a moderator of the Facebook group Zoom Memes for Self-Quarantines, a place for nearly half a million college students to send memes about online classes and the coronavirus. Thousands of posts stack up each day. I couldn't sleep and I, I like rolled over in my bed at like 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. And like instinctively, without thinking about it, picked up my phone and started like moderating posts. The moderators say people of all ages are using humor as a method to cope and find some light in the situation. Because it's a great way also, I think, for friends to connect. Because like I'm not someone who will like text people like every single day, especially people that I'm not like really close with. But even mm -hmm. if it's just like getting a Facebook tag on a meme or something, like it just reminds me that like, oh, they're still thinking about me or like I'll tag them and be like, thought of you. Subgroups were created for music, books, publications, and like, more. Our group is basically like kind of showing what online university could look like. Northwestern's own meme page has seen a burst of COVID related content too. The group says when they're not approving posts, they're on meetings for merchandise, events, and fundraising. We just have like so much power in our hands really to like not be doing more. It's kind of like crazy almost. Pew, pew, pew. Hold up. Wait a, minute. It's a, a lot of people showing their creativity there as they're stuck in their houses. But that'll do it for us for the special COVID-19 report on the Northwestern News Network. We'll have continuing up-to-date information on our social media pages, for now, I'm Andrew Rowan, and on behalf of everyone at the Northwestern News Network, thank you for watching, and we hope you and your family stay safe and healthy.